In this video, I am going to be ranking financial YouTubers. Now, I was going to add on some other information on this video, such as why shouldn't you listen to certain big names on Instagram, such as Erica Kohlberg, for example. I saw one of her videos, she was talking about stock splits and the way she was talking about them made it sound like that stock splits were some special way of increasing the stock price, but that's simply not the case. The Plain Bagel has a good video on this, but essentially there's, essentially if you go back and look at all the data on the price of stocks as they've moved after a stock split, it's basically barely changed at all. So yeah, I was going to talk about stuff like that. Some popular names you see pop up on your TikTok and Instagram feed talking about finance and why you shouldn't listen to them because Quite frankly, the information isn't the best, but that would eat up too much time and I feel that it's better off just to have this video dedicated to the rankings of financial YouTubers. And on that same note, I was going to mention why you should watch these to build your own knowledge base and why you shouldn't rely on mutual funds. For example, there's a mutual fund in Australia you can invest in called Spaceship. It's just an app and you just chuck money in it. Its performance is horrible year to date. And although they have sold this stock since I was last invested, they had invested in this particular company called A2 Milk. Now, A2 Milk, long story short, it's like a milk company, in case you couldn't tell by the name, here in Australia, and it basically specializes in a certain type of milk. And my background in nutritional knowledge tells me that this is a bad investment. And the reason is, long story short, A2 Milk is a separate type of milk that's bred that's specifically bred through uh, generations of cows and although there's no studies that show that it's easier on the digestion and the well tolerance of people with lactose intolerance there's a lot of anecdotal claims that show that a2 milk is a lot easier on their stomachs basically a2 milk is more easily absorbed and digested for a certain number of people but it's too small of a minority for it to be like a massive growing company, if that makes sense. That's obviously a very simplified, dumbed down version of it, but I've seen all this sort of A2 milk stuff and your lactate enzymes in your gut and all that stuff years and years ago when I used to be really into the nutrition space. And basically all that knowledge tells me that A2 milk, not really a good company to invest in, but that mutual fund spaceship had invested in them and they had their own reasons but i disagreed with those reasons so the reason i brought this up is this is why you should build your own knowledge for this stuff rather than relying on other people because sometimes other people just have it wrong and you may have a different perspective that may even be a better investment than what they can come up with such as the example in a2 milk i just said okay so i'll be ranking them from S to F tier. Well, actually, I'll start off with F tier and work my way up. But what determines my rankings? Well, firstly, we've got the quality of information, in case that's not obvious. You know, it's financial YouTubers. I'm not here for entertainment. I'm here for information. So the quality of information obviously will bump them up higher. Another good point is if they've actually worked in the industry, for example, when I was at uni, all of my accounting lectures were accountants at some point. When I was studying my cert for in fitness, my teacher used to be a personal trainer, actually was still was a personal trainer at the time of teaching. Now, although anyone can, I guess, go and read a textbook about it and then regurgitate that information, there's something to be said about actually working in the industry. So if they've worked in the industry, they get extra points. How relevant the information is to my investor stat. So my investor stat is based around swing trading and I also like understanding intricate financial information. I don't give high rankings to basic information. So for me I enjoy learning as my regular viewers would know and although the classic just dollar cost average into the market or buy an index fund although that can work out fine if you really delve into this information, you can really magnify your gains in the stock market. So these guys will be ranked based on how they help my investor stat. 
you you can definitely disagree. Like for example, someone I've chucked in C tier, you may think of them as an A or an S tier because they keep it basic for you and they just give you the bare bones information that you're after because your investment strategy is just to buy and hold. That's fine. But for me, I'm maxing these stats out. So I can't give a high ranking to someone giving me basic information. Another factor playing into my ranking is your ability to progress your knowledge if you continuously watch the channel. So some channels, as you'll see on this list, rinse and repeat video ideas every few months. Bruh, I literally know this. Just teach me something new. So again, that will be obvious when I rank them, but there's quite a few channels I know out there who will basically copy and paste the same information they've already done because their only source of money is from YouTube. So if they make a, well, if they rehash a popular video topic they made in the past, then obviously that'll just get more clicks again, more ad revenue, blah, blah, blah. But as an OG viewer or a long time viewer of that channel, you're not really doing anything for me. So that's, that's gonna bump you down. If you have new stuff all the time, which may sound hard at first, but it's a stock market. There's always new stuff. So if you have new stuff all the time, you go up in rankings. If you have really bland copy and paste stuff you've already done, you go down. Sponsors, the less the better. Although I'm not really gonna rank too harshly on this because obviously people gotta get that bag and it's gotta, you've gotta make it worth your time with creating these videos and whatnot. But the thing I will mention is obviously if people are sponsored by something, they're going to be more inclined to give you biased information that suits that sponsor. For example, Masterworks is a pretty common sponsor in the whole investment space. And a lot of people will sort of talk about how, oh, contemporary art has outperformed the market, blah, blah, blah. Is your portfolio shot? Well, try investing in art with today's sponsor Masterworks. So they'll be more inclined to steer you towards, you know, what their sponsors are promoting. Another good example is crypto platforms. People will talk about crypto a lot and they'll steer you towards that because they're sponsored by it. So although I'm not going to rank as harshly for sponsors, it doesn't really help. My top two channels actually have no sponsors, but you'll see them when we get to them. Now, another ranking point, whatever you want to call it, if they work in the industry whilst still doing YouTube on the side. Now, why does this matter to me? This means they have less reliance on YouTube income, meaning they're less dependent on pulling clickbait bullshit and taking on every and any sponsor. So that kind of ties into what I was just saying before about sponsors. But if someone's, I guess, primary or main source of income, or if they make like a very comfortable source of income from another job, as you'll see with the some of the A tier and S tiers, then they're more inclined to give you just general good information rather than just trying to pull the whole YouTube game of getting your clicks, milking your watch time, sort of pushing you towards certain sponsors, signing up to their, using their referral links and shit like that. So although this is a very niche, like this isn't very common at all, but if that is the case, it does help your ranking in my eyes. Like for example, if I made a lot of finance YouTubers, I'd rank myself pretty highly, obviously biased, but my, my primary income sources aren't from YouTube. In fact, I make no money from this. I have like two sources of very stable income from both of my jobs. Then there's obviously investing just in the stock market if you want to count that. And then there's real estate shit like that. So I'm more inclined to give you the good juicy information rather than try and pull YouTube clickbait shit because it's not like I'm going to get paid for pulling that cringy stuff anyway. And then lastly on this list is my own opinion. So you'll go, once you see me run through the list, some of them may not like add up. So for example, if I have someone in C tier and someone in B tier, you'll be like, oh, hang on, but you ranked them in C tier because of this reason but then you rank them in B tier because of this shouldn't they be the same or whatever I don't have like a hard set of rules this is like it's very obviously subjective in my own opinion but sometimes there are 
some things I can't really quantify. I just think that this channel is better than the other. These are my reasons and, well, if my reasons don't really make sense or if I haven't really given a reason, it's just my opinion really. But I think you'll find that you'll be hard pressed to dispute the F tiers, most of the A tiers and the S tier. I, I find it hard to, well, once you've gone through the video and heard my reasons as to why I've ranked everyone here, you'll be hard pressed to argue the S, A and F tier spots. You can jumble around the rest, but again, It'll be my own opinion, and you'll have your own. So, it is what it is. So, let's move on. So, what gives me the right to rank? I'm just some YouTuber who recently only hit 500 subs. I don't even work in the finance industry. I do work as an accountant, so I do have some sort of real-world money knowledge, but it's not exactly the same. So, why am I the one to talk? Earlier this year, in fact, not long ago at all, in the span of two months, my portfolio returned 42%. And I've only really gotten into investing this year. Last year, I started with a really basic sort of investing stuff, like Graham Stephan, for example. You just type in investing stuff and his videos are the ones that pop up. That'll be a point I'll touch on in a bit. And then just the generic crypto stuff. But I never really understood the whole stock market or macro economy or anything. Like, I don't even think I knew who Jerome Powell was at all in 2021. So just goes to show how far I've come in the span of like less than a year. But anyway, you don't receive these returns of 42% in a bear market from pure luck. You've got to at least sort of know what you're doing to get that kind of return in a bear market. Uh, we don't talk about the current state of my portfolio. So I had a, well... I had very few bad bets. The problem is I went ham on them. I basically made a wrong call going to the CPI and then I got that wrong and then I got really mad, chased my losses, went down more. So if you look at how many right calls I've made, they drastically outweigh the wrong calls I've made. But because the amounts were skewed in a certain way, it's basically shot my 42% gain. But hey, it's part of the learning process. And if you go through my social medias, you'll find that I've never actually told anyone to do exactly what I did. I never told anyone, hey, stock market went way up today. Probably bet that it's going to drop heaps tomorrow. So I'm loading up ham. You guys should too. I never said anything like that because I knew it was a risky bet. I'm not going to, you know, tell my followers to do something that reckless. I got burned. But you live and learn and also not a single cent in my stock portfolio is money that i absolutely need so it doesn't really matter as far as my bank account is concerned and as far as my real estate investment is concerned every cent i have in the stock market is gone so anyway back to this what gives me the right to rank there is no way the classic buy and hold strategy returned 42 percent at any point in this year unless you invested purely into oil which you wouldn't have known to do unless you follow this stuff closely so the classic buy and hold tells you to diversify your portfolio which means you obviously wouldn't be fully in oil if pra practically every sector is down this year except for oil so the fact that my stock portfolio isn't actually down year to date just further solidifies my argument of why i get to why i get to have a say in this ranking thing because I at least have somewhat a clue of what I'm doing if I'm able to beat the market. And lastly, I spend a lot of my day listening to various channels while at work. So when I'm at work, they let you have your headphones in. So instead of me listening to music, although I do, I, I will listen to music, but once I'm done with the finance stuff, but basically whenever I'm at, whenever I'm at work, I listen to finance stuff and then listen to music. But the point is I listen to a lot of finance stuff. And I actually go and watch heaps of other channels. So, I see many other comments of people under other financial YouTubers who say, Yay, Graham Stefan and Andre Jick and Meet Kevin uploaded today. My day is complete. Or they'll say something like, Patrick Boyle and The Plain Bagel are the only finance YouTubers I watch. You guys only watch two to three channels? That's fair enough if you're not super into investing, but 
that just solidifies my right to be the one to rank people. You can't really be ranking a particular industry if you haven't at least explored other options out there. That'd be like trying to rank fitness YouTubers if you only watch Athlean X, Jeff Nippard, and Jeremy Ether. Like there's so many others out there, you should probably branch out a bit more before doing any sort of ranking. Okay, one thing I'll quickly mention, there's some channels out there that are more so documentary or entertainment focused. Examples include Magnates Media, Moon, Logically Answered, Windover Productions, and Real Life Law. They can have good videos on finance slash economic topics. In fact, some information in some of these videos I never saw from other channels, but I don't consider them financial channels. Some people do, feel free to disagree. These aren't ranked in my ranking list, but if I did rank them, they'd probably all be in B tier. Now, lastly, before we get onto the rankings, I'm going to quickly mention the sponsor of today's video, FTX. I'm just messing with you. They're not sponsored, obviously. Well, I'm not sponsored by them, obviously. So, in this ranking list, channels may be downgraded due to the promotion of FTX. So, there's a little bit of controversy around this in terms of like who gets the blame obviously scam bankrupt fraud will get most of the blame but one argument i have seen for people not giving financial youtubers flack oh they didn't know there were other bigger names who were endorsed by this how come you're not giving them flack so yeah one argument athletes and large institutions invested into it well athletes are endorsed by everything and i don't watch them for financial advice right and no one really does. I don't watch Curry for his financial information. I watch him for his long range threes. Large institutions had a very small amount of their capital injected into FTX compared to their total funds. So you might hear, oh, this company had a, you know, BlackRock had a few billion or whatever. A few billion is pennies for BlackRock. So that doesn't really mean anything. And you'll see that a lot of big institutions like that will invest in a lot of other stuff in the hope that one of them blows up right so that's not really an argument another argument is oh well they were fooling the u.s politicians or whatever well politicians have always been corrupt anyway and i know that spf has ties with political parties i think he's his parents are somewhat related somehow <laughs> what well, they're really they're related to the political party somehow and then i think like i don't know gary gensler was friends with his dad or his dad's friend or something i'm not exactly sure but i know he's got ties to the political party so the argument that well financial youtube has kind of seen this coming because the u.s government didn't see this coming well the u.s government's well every government's obviously got a bit of corruption in it so that argument doesn't really hold up another one i've seen was well kevin o'leary invested in them well if you have delved into i guess that sort of side of things in terms of kevin o'leary you'll find he's not exactly like the top tier investor that people think he is and how i once thought he was too there was this little platform he had where you could pay like a couple of thousand bucks to have him endorse your brand which was really funny because he's on shark tank criticizing people's small business ideas but then he's also taking you know a couple of thousand bucks to have him talk about your special brand or business for two minutes it'd be pretty funny if the same business that he tore apart on shark tank was the same one he endorsed for a couple of thousand bucks so you know what credible investor goes around doing that but i with that said i do like some of the stuff kevin o'leary's done there was this really funny sort of interview once where he was talking about some engineering student having to choose between his business and his fiance and he's just like which is easier to replace your business or your fiance uh, if you watch it it's so funny but like i don't have malice towards the guy but i'm just i'm just saying like he's not like a warren buffett or anything and in fact buffett and munger really stayed away from crypto so to wrap that little section up kevin o'leary just because he invested into it doesn't mean well it doesn't really mean anything in fact i'm pretty sure he's still defending spf as well so you know enough said so zip trader adam from in the money and coffeezilla all went over good points relating to this so i've sort of done a brief summary but if you want more info definitely go check out them so basically it's too good to be true with 
you know, the sort of returns that FTX was saying that they could provide and same with BlockFi and stuff like that, any due diligence would have caught this. Now, Spencer Cornelia, another YouTube channel I watch, I used to really like him, but he really lost a lot of credibility with that recent video he did. He had a video where he had a very bad take on defending the big finance YouTubers for what they did. And then, yeah, he, he was one of the ones making the argument of, oh, well, the big financial institutions invested and Tom Brady and Steph Curry did and blah, blah, blah. But if you really want to, I guess, see why that argument doesn't hold up, go check out that the videos from In The Money, Zip Trader and CoffeeZilla. Another thing is, I haven't really seen many of them hold any accountability. They post some half-assed apology and move on like nothing happened, just like how I expected. They collected thousands, possibly millions, and then their followers lost heaps because they trusted them and they let them down. And now they're just trying to remove all traces of that online. So no accountability whatsoever. Now, one thing I will say, I didn't lose a cent in FTX, so I'm not butthurt about this because I didn't lose a cent. All my money was in Binance, which it's out of Binance now, but it's not like I had any money locked on FTX and now it's gone. So I'm speaking purely from an unbiased point of view because I had no money in this game. But yeah, with anyone without bias can clearly see that the FinTubers deserve some flack for this, which we'll go into now. F tier. So starting off F tier is financial education. Uh, the dude who runs this channel is called Jeremy. So when you hear someone say Jeremy from financial education, that's who they're talking about. Horribly ironic channel name. You don't learn shit. He picks up a camera and just starts rambling and that's it. I used to watch him since his videos were the ones that popped up when I first started looking for this stuff, which is part of the problem. These guys in F tier are really good at YouTube, they're not good at finance. But we'll delve into that a bit later. Next up, meet Kevin. This guy got really lucky with real estate. There was a video I saw and he said in the video, I can time the market. He said something like, oh, other people think they can't, no one can time the market, but I can time the market. How arrogant can you be? Especially because he'd barely been in investing and stuff since then. Like I said, he got lucky with real estate. He also sells a course on day trading, and last time I checked, it was valued at over 6,000 bucks, even though he has no credentials. I can't believe this sort of stuff is legal. And several months ago, he sold $20 million worth of stock, even though he told his followers to hodl. So it's like you're telling him one thing and you're doing the complete opposite. The, you know, big hypocrite. And again, it was a try and it was a trying to time the market thing, you know, sell out now, wait for it to drop a bit more than buy back in. But you can't be telling your followers to just hold and then you go and do that. Stuff like that really costs you some credibility, but somehow he still has a loyal fan base. So he's probably got some good real estate points. See, I live in Australia, so any of the real estate stuff I learned from the US doesn't really like there's different tax laws and stuff. So although I guess the general picture is the same. Well, obviously, because we've been different geographic locations, there's nothing I can do with that information. So, you know, maybe if we're ranking real estate, maybe he's up there, but finance YouTuber, <clears throat> F. Next up, Graham Stephan. Now, he knows real estate. I actually watched a lot of his earlier videos on real estate. Sounded, you know, pretty sound. Like, what? Sounded like pretty sound information, but... Again, I'm in Australia, so there's not a lot I can do with that information. And it's not like I got millions of dollars lying around. So even if I did learn something pretty useful, it's not like I could do anything with that information. But anyway, he knows real estate, but he doesn't know stocks or crypto. He makes videos talking about random topics and all doom and gloom. And then at the end of the video, he just tells you to dollar cost average into the market or just hold over time. He also doesn't shut up about smashing the like button and subscribing. Bro, if we like your stuff, we will sub. Shut up. So this goes into what I was saying before about ranking channels. If you learn, like learning stuff, like he'll talk about, you know, some random topic, right? Might be relevant and might be new, but he'll just end the video with, you know, just dollar cost averages, the market, blah, blah, blah. Now, that's good advice for general people. But the problem is he will title his videos something like do this now or how I'm preparing but you're doing the same shit. So 
very misleading. F tier, obviously. Last on the F tier list is Andre Jik. Now, he has too much shitty magic tricks in his videos. He spends one third of each of them talking about a sponsor. And I'm not even kidding. Go and time some of them. It's like a third of the video. There's been some good info he's put out, I'll admit. I There have been some videos where I'm like, oh, actually, that's, you know, interesting. I hadn't actually seen that yet. However, when you look into it, anyone could go onto whatever report he found and extract the info from there. And in fact, it wouldn't be that hard to find on Twitter or even if you just searched on CNBC or something. Or if you watch some of the A or S tier, you know, YouTube, YouTubers that uh, you're going to see, they would have said the same thing or they would have told you where you can go find this. So really, the only good info he had was just because I, I watched his video first and not them. So, you know, unfortunately, that's nowhere near enough to bump you up from F tier. So now I'm going to round this out by talking about all of them. So what I'm about to say applies to all four of these guys. They have no timestamps in their videos. So literally 95% of the channels I watch have timestamps. Now this is obviously handy because if someone's trying to talk about a specific topic and they've named that video after that topic but they talk about other stuff, I don't want to hear it. I only want to hear that specific part. But if there's like, you know, no timestamps, I'm going to have to either just scroll through and just hope I find it or I'm going to have to listen to the whole thing. And the reason they don't have timestamps is so obvious. They're just trying to milk you for watch time because obviously watch time is important for the YouTube algorithm, which is why their videos get promoted first, which is why I watched a lot of these guys to start off with and how I didn't really start to figure out a lot of this stock market stuff until the last recent months. Another thing is they promote stuff they have no idea about. <coughs> FTX, <coughs> health supplements. Again, I've gone over why the FTX thing, why they deserve flack for it. Another thing is the health supplements. I, th I mentioned this in one of my other videos, but Andre and Graham took sponsorships from a health supplement company before. You, um, you shouldn't really be doing that if that's not in your niche. Now, I had a look at the nutritional label and stuff and the ingredients for that supplement. And although it was good, like it wasn't, you know, incredibly unhealthy or anything. It wasn't a scam or anything. But how would they know that? They wouldn't. They were just taking the sponsorship because they're greedy. And the recent FTX thing has magnified this and solidified this point because, well, there are quite a few other good videos out there talking about why, but one of the examples was they all ran this sort of other side channel called millennial money now since the ftx thing blew up they actually removed all the videos from this channel but they didn't delete the channel and the reason is turns out you can still actually donate money to that channel like they had some sort of tier list or something so you could still give money to the channel and donate even though there's nothing on there like, how greedy can you be? If they truly wanted to really hide the tracks, they should have just removed the whole channel. Although, actually, there's some legal disputes on whether keeping the videos up would have been a better idea or deleting it or deleting the whole channel is actually a worse idea than keeping some of it up or blah, blah, blah. But the fact that they left the fact you could still donate money and they hadn't, like, cancelled the recurring subscriptions or whatever to the channel just shows how greedy that is. So although you could make an argument, hey, maybe Andre and Graham, you know, maybe they are health conscious and whatnot. I just don't see it now. I don't see it especially now, given the fact that they've done all this other stuff. But yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll go on. They've got egregious clickbait thumbnails and titles. Now, I'm not as mad as this because most people do it, but they're up there with some of the worst. There are probably other reasons why I put these guys in F tier, but I think you've got the general gist of it. And this video is going to be a lot longer than I originally thought at this rate, so I have to speed this up. So next we've got E tier. Now first up in E tier is Mark Tilbury. Now to be honest, I like him. But if you watch his stuff, you won't learn much else outside the basics. Now this is fine for you know beginners and whatnot, but it gets to a point where you need to grow and develop. 
You don't stay in primary school forever. You need to go to primary school to get the basics, but then you need to go to high school. And then after that, you need to go to uni. Well, you don't need to go to uni, but you know, you need to progress from high school. Like in the gym, you don't keep benching 30 kilos forever. You got to go up and grow. Very basic level stuff from him. Nothing abhorrent, but you won't grow from watching him. However, he does have good random starter business ideas, but this falls under the online brand or business stat, not the investing stat. Investing is meant to be somewhat passive. It's not supposed to be another job. Like all my stock market stuff is sort of done on the side of while I'm doing something else. Like, like I mentioned before, I listen to it while I'm at work. I listen to it when I'm driving. I listen to it in the shower. I listen to it when I'm cooking dinner or something like that. You know, it's not like it's a whole separate other thing that I need to dedicate time for. Like, you know, my job when I'm in, when I'm at my primary job, I'm not also at the gym at the same time. When I'm at the gym, I'm also not at my second job at the same time. When I'm at my second job, I'm not also at my first job at the same time. You know what I mean? That time section is blocked off for this particular thing. Investing, you can just really do on the side. Like I can open my app when I'm at my second job and put in a stock market order in like a minute. But you couldn't really do that with a business unless you really had it up and running or unless it was completely on, unless it was like completely online or something. But even then, it's not like you do much work in a minute, but you, you get the point. He's got a lot of good sort of starter business ideas, but that's not what I'm ranking him on. Now, this other channel, Biaheza, Biaheza, Biaza, I don't know, I don't exactly know how you pronounce it. Now, I don't see him as a finance channel, but I will mention him because he did pump FTX. So, you know, you get the... You do the crime, you get the screen time, as CoffeeZilla says. So he has some good video ideas, but to be honest, you can't be pumping financial products if you don't know about them. Again, Zip Trader saw this, Adam from In The Money saw this, and there's a few others I watched also saw this coming, but yeah, you, are, you can't be doing that shit. Next up in E tier is Tom Nash. Now, I used to watch him a lot. The problem is he started making very bad calls consistently. Obviously, no one is perfect, but he was wrong way more often than he was right. Plus, I found he stopped doing a lot of the good financial info he used to and has more so become more of a reaction channel, giving his thoughts on some finance stuff, some political stuff. Now, he didn't get too greedy like the FTs. He still did promote FTX, but... I've seen him turn down other sponsorships. I think he turned down Masterworks at some point because I didn't like how he wanted to pro promote him or whatever. Uh, and then there's this other video I watched from him and he purposely cut it off early so it wasn't long enough to get two ads or something. So I found that pretty funny and entertaining, but he's nowhere near as bad as the F tiers. But he's not really good enough to be ranked any higher on my list. So E tier for Tom. Okay, D tier. Starting off D tier, we've got Max Ma. Now, to be honest, he's got good crypto stuff. If we were in a bull market, but we're not. He's got also, he also covers good news topics too, but there are better sources. I like the guy, but in this market, there are other better sources of information. Some of the crypto stuff he goes into is obviously really good for crypto. And like they're very niche and unique little tidbits. For me, personally though, right now, because this isn't the market to be doing that sort of stuff, he can't really rank any higher in my opinion. Plus for me, it's not super actionable information, like setting up some sort of, I don't know, crypto bot thing. I don't know, you have to watch his videos to sort of get the gist of it, but you know, he's not terrible by any means, but from my perspective, it, I can't really rank him in C or higher because that would imply he's on the same level as other people, which he's not. So, yeah, like I don't, I don't really want to rank him in D tier because I because I like him and he does have good information. But based on everything, I you know my ranking criteria, he just can't rank any higher, not in the bear market anyway. Next up is Nate O'Brien. Now I really like this guy to be honest. He's one of the first financial sort of stuff I'd ever watched. Good basic budget tips and basic level finance stuff to implement in your everyday life. 
But again, like with Mark Tilbury, you won't grow from watching him. He had a free budget sheet on Excel that he linked in a video once and I actually used it until I, you know, learned Excel and made my own. It was very helpful. So one thing I'll mention, there's two ways of getting more money. You can make more money or you can save more or spend less. A lot of Nate's ideas come from spending less, but you can only spend less or save more to a point. You'll eventually need to make more money and any money making ideas from him turn out to be business related, not investing related, which is the same, you know, thing as Mark. I'm not ranking him on channels that give you good business tips. I'm ranking them on, you know, the passive finance stuff. Like Nate does a very basic sort of buy and hold type of thing. There's no like swing trading strategies or covering macroeconomic topics. So yeah, based on that, I can't really rank him higher. And the reason he ranks higher than Mark is because I've learnt, well, I absorbed more information, I guess, from Nate than I did Mark. So that's why Nate ranks a bit higher. Now here's a, here's a more obscure channel, Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. It's more an Australian channel. So he promotes his Patreon way too much. Like he cannot go a video without trying to get you into his Patreon at least twice in the video. There's some general finance videos he makes that aren't really anything new. However, he is really good for Aussie real estate. But there's only so much you can do with this information. Uh, in terms of investing, anyone can, you know, anyone can have 500 bucks and start investing or even less, right? Uh, most people can get 500 bucks. You work like a few weeks at a, if you're like in the, you know, your teens or something, you work a few weeks at your part-time job and boom, you got 500 bucks. You can start investing with that. But in terms of real estate, like, you know, you have to have a lot of money, obviously, to get started with that. And it's extremely illiquid too. Like stocks, you can just buy and sell like, you know, within a day if the market's a shut or whatever, or you can buy it and sell it right then and there when the markets are open but you can't do that with real estate obviously it takes months so good real estate information but you know there's only so much you can do with that now next one is heiser says another sort of aussie channel a more obscure channel so this guy is an australian architect and he talks about random news mostly related to like finance the economy you know working stuff like that stuff right up my alley now, admittedly, it's more so a talk show or a reaction channel, but those who don't know much can learn from this guy. I usually watch one of his videos per night. So, you know, by the time I finish work, finish gym, there's at least one or two videos he's uploaded of him reacting to some news article about finance or something, then giving his two cents, calling out the bullshit, stuff like that. And that's where you can learn from him. But I can't rank him higher due to the lack of trading information on this. And a lack of total focus on the stock market. Like I mentioned before, he will cover stuff like work, you know, like lazy people or job markets and stuff, which falls under my career stat, which is nice. But we're ranking him on investment stuff. So, you know, talking about that doesn't really bump you up. And the reason I can't rank him lower is because there's always new stuff. Like I said, he'll react to the recent news articles and then give his two cents. So if you're newer, you can learn stuff from him. But as you'll see, there's a lot of channels in this. So if you're new and you're feeling overwhelmed, probably don't go for any of the lower tier stuff. Go for the upper tier stuff. But if you've got time and you haven't seen this channel before, it might be worth checking out. All right, now we're on to C tier. First up is Brian Jung. Now he did pump FTX, so he does lose some points. But in terms of crypto, he's been one of the best sources of information for me. Or at least he used to. He used to make videos on daily updates in crypto and he delved into certain topics so you understood what was going on and you were up to date with a topic, like the recent topics in the crypto market. But at the time of recording, which is the 28th of November 2022, he's been a little quiet lately. So I think it's because he got burned from FTX and now he's really discouraged and doesn't know what to say. But for me, he was the primary source of crypto news for a while. Some channels in B tier also covered it, but they're not as efficiently as he did. And he tends, and sorry, and the B tiers would tend to update you a few days later rather than, you know, on that same day with Brian Jung. Like he used to have a video every day in 2021, I, I think, maybe three a week or something, but, you know, a lot more frequent than others. 
And then, yeah, some other channels will spend 20 minutes on their videos with their technical analysis sometimes. Some other channels will spend 20 minutes on their videos with technical analysis on this crypto stuff. Sometimes I don't want that, I just want the news. Now, I can't rank him lower due to the irreplaceable nature of the information, or at least it was, if he keeps this little random stagnant hiatus up or starts going back to talking about credit cards like he used to, he'll bump down. But I also can't rank him higher due to the FTX pump and the lack of trading information or knowledge progression on him. So sometimes he will cover, you know, macroeconomic information that you could make trades off, but I follow other channels that do this better, so that's why he is in C tier. So next up we've got Stoic Finance. Now he used to be A tier for me because he used to do daily market update videos, but he stopped doing them a few months ago. He'd have different articles compared to what I'd see from the other channels, which would have really good information in them that the others wouldn't cover. Because I think he's subscribed to some sort of, I don't know, paid subscription service, which I'm not doing, but he did. So I'd get the information from there and, you know, I'd learn a lot. But now what he's done lately is he goes into videos that are specifically targeted towards a certain topic, such as you know the russian sanctions here or the ftx saga here or you know just stuff like that more more videos that could sort of go viral if that makes sense but the thing is he's usually a little bit late to the party by the time he's made a video on that topic i've already seen it from someone else so you know I'll, a lot of the time it's just regurgitating a lot of stuff i will have seen sometimes there's new information but it's not like you know super relevant and it's not like i can do a whole lot with it because a lot of the trading chance has already left. But if he returns to what he used to do, then he'll be back up to A tier. Next up, we've got Joseph Carlson. Now this guy also pumped FTX, but nowhere near as bad. I don't think it was super common, but I can't remember. And if I'm honest, I'm not gonna go back through his videos and find out which one was sponsored by FTX. My regular viewers will know I just do not have the time for that. So Joseph Carlson does portfolio updates, which are nice. And he does go into some relevant financial news in his videos, but just like Stoic Finance, he's usually late to the party. He also talks shit about Chicken Genius Singapore in a, you know, a while ago, so he does lose points for that. It, this guy's more of a buy and hold, which is fine, but it's not for me. He could be in D tier, but because he has good points on financial news topics, he gets bumped up. So although he is late to the party, he does cover it from some different perspectives and he brings out certain charts I'd never seen before. So it's just really good for expanding your knowledge in that sense, but he just, he can't rank higher because it's just, his videos are not frequent enough for me to make trading information off and he's more of a buy and hold guy, which, you know, isn't really up my alley. So Chicken Genius Singapore, next, the guy Joseph Carlson was talking shit about a while ago. He's got good short clips of information. Most of the time, it's more technical stuff, which is nice. Sometimes he does delve into general macroeconomic stuff. So recently he had a video on the Fed, but he doesn't upload much and you don't get a broad picture of the market watching him. So he's not good enough to be higher, but nothing too egregious to warrant D tier since his vids are so short and infrequent. Worst case, if he uploads some rubbish, which he won't, but even if he does, you waste two minutes of your life every few weeks watching it. Whereas if you watch other useless channels, you'll be wasting a lot more than a couple of minutes every few weeks. It'll be more like 10 or 20 minutes every couple of days. So next up is new money. Now, I really like his style. He's one of the first you know, sort of finance money YouTubers I ever found, fellow Aussie too. Like, even my brother watches him, and my brother doesn't really do YouTube. He does, I don't know, something else. I don't know, he studies and works a lot. Well, I guess I do too, but, you know, that's not important. The thing with new money is his topics are very beginner level buy and hold stuff. He talks a lot about the big investors and what they're doing, which is completely fine. Really good for beginners, I know. But again, that gets to a point where you need to grow your knowledge. So all the bigger investors will do like the buy and hold thing and then they have their little filing, you know, that little filing report they have to do and you find out what stock moves they made like a month after they've made them. Then New Money will talk about that. 
some people might get good stock ideas from that. Like, for example, Michael Burry recently buying into that prison stock. You know, I didn't buy into that. He's got his own reasons, but by the time anyone found out, the stock had moved quite a lot already anyway. So, you know, your trading opportunity was already gone. But yeah, I can't rank him lower because he does have good, good information and stuff from a beginner's level, but for my level, he can't really rank any higher because again, there's not a lot of trading information I can do off this and it's very basic level stuff. Next up, we've got Daniel Pronk. I really like this guy as well. Good, He does good in-depth videos on certain stocks, but in terms of overall macroeconomic information, there isn't a lot there. He will delve into it from time to time, but I can't rank him higher due to, I guess, the lack of overall macroeconomic information. But the delving into the stocks is a really good thing. One standout to me is Amazon's earnings for quarter one of this year, 2022. Their earnings were really good, but Daniel went into it and said most of the gain was from shares that Amazon has in Rivian. And then next, um, the next quarter that Amazon reported, I was like, yeah, they're going to report bad earnings because a lot of it is in Rivian and that stock has gone down a lot. And that is exactly what happened. Back then, I didn't realize I could short on eToro. Otherwise, I would have done this and made a lot of money. But I got that from Daniel Pronk and I didn't see anyone else covering this. So goes to show you how sometimes some of the, you know, more obscure information can really help you make money. But like... I, I rank him higher, but the thing is, there's just most of my like stock trades and stuff these days are done from macroeconomic information, and there are just other channels that are better in this sense than him. Next up, we've got Epic Economist. This channel does in-depth topics on current macroeconomic conditions. A very bearish channel, but that's the market we're in. Now, there's only so much you can do in terms of a trading sense based on how, based on knowing how bad things are. Now, what I mean by this, it's, well, it's kind of hard to explain unless you actually watch their videos. For example, they had some recent video, recent at the time of recording at least, uh, a recent video on Walmart. Now, I already knew Walmart was having issues, and the extra info that they provided was nice, but I can't trade much based off this. I'm not going to buy the stock, obviously, but I do need to know when to short and when to get out, but the problem is that time had already passed, probably, and even then... If there's more room to short and get out of the market, I can't get that information from this channel, so that's why it's in C tier. Although I will admit this channel has had barely any sponsors. It had no sponsors for the longest time. I think it had like two in the last few months, but that was it. So that is a plus for this channel. Next up, we've got Steven Van Meter. So his videos will go into articles that have been posted on some finance thingo. Like, I don't know, something from the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times or something. And he will give his professional opinion on this. He also does technical stuff on the weekends. But the issue is the articles he covers can really flip-flop a lot. For example, one day there might be an article saying rally incoming. And then the next day it'll say the market will crash. Now, obviously the market can change day to day, but there's no consistent theme being established. It comes across as him sort of just reading any article and making a video on it. So for me, anyway, that's why he's in C tier and not any higher. All right, next up, B tier, we've got Coin Bureau. Now he also pumped FTX, but I personally didn't see this as frequently. Whereas like some of the other F tier channels, you can, you know, you could, you can definitely remember how often they pumped FTX. But in terms of Coin Bureau, I didn't remember it much, but you know, I could be wrong. Now this is another good source of crypto knowledge especially coin bureau's weekly updates so every uh, i think it'll be every monday if you're in america for me it's like every tuesday morning coin bureau will upload some weekly sort of recap video and it'll go over well a weekly recap of what happened in the stock market and the crypto market too lately it's been more geared towards the stock market because obviously there isn't a whole heap going on in crypto in terms of like trading stuff you know obviously the ftx thing is a huge mess but there's not a lot you can trade off in crypto land at the moment. But regardless, it's a really good source of information. 
Now, this channel will also delve into the specifics of particular cryptocurrencies, which is good for bull markets. And it's nice info for bear markets, but you can't really trade much based on it. Like, I don't need to know how good Algorand is going to be in the next five years because that doesn't matter in the bear market because it's just going to keep dropping in price until we reverse and get back into another bull market. So this channel ranks higher than Brian Jung. Now, although Brian Jung was more of a source of information for me compared to Coin Bureau, like Coin Bureau does delve into the topics really thoroughly, but sometimes I just want the base level sort of news and just to go over it, you know, in two to three minutes, like what Brian did rather than 20 minutes, like what Coin Bureau does. But Coin Bureau ranks higher because, because of that more depth information, which sounds weird since I just said I preferred the shorter one, but you got to give points for the higher quality of information. But one of the main things is Brian sort of gives me that influencer vibe, which I hate hate it there was this one video he uploaded and it was like a day in the life and he literally used the word influencer and it was some crypto event they got you know talking out and he filmed his gym session and stuff like that and he said in the next crypto video after that he said oh that video didn't pop off as well as i'd hoped because it had like a third of the views he normally gets or something that's because we watch you for the crypto stuff we don't watch you for your day in the life right yeah now yeah i've filmed day in the life stuff before but that's more to show you how you can keep going to the gym when you have a job or how you invest when you have a job or how you can still do some study or investment stuff after work you know you got to lead by example sometimes i don't really care what unemployed people do in a day in their life if i'm honest i just don't find it appealing obviously a lot of people do though so next up in b tier is benjamin cohen a good source of crypto information and he does do macroeconomic stuff too now he's also a charts guy which don't watch many of so he ranks a bit higher now this channel isn't monetized at all which is pretty cool but if i was him i'd at least chuck ads or if i was in his shoes because if i was him i would be thinking the way he does so anyway he also doesn't do sponsors as far as i've seen he might have you know some sponsor for some sort of crypto trading tool or something maybe i'm not sure i've never seen it but it doesn't seem like outside the realm of possibility for this type of channel but it's not like he promoted ftx or anything at least from what i saw now in my opinion he's just not as good as the a tiers so you might be thinking well he's a good source of information why isn't he a tier well you'll see when i get to a tiers but basically Although the in-depth chart information on certain macroeconomic stuff is really good, it's not as concise or short enough for me to make a lot of trading ideas from. Again, that'll make sense once you've seen the A-tier channels, but in case you haven't been able to tell, I watch a lot of different channels. And if you're a regular viewer, you know that I'm pretty busy, so I don't have time to be watching every single minute of every single finance video on YouTube all day, every day. Although I do have a bit of time at work, you know, while I'm actually doing my job. I don't have all the time in the world, so sometimes I need things to be a bit more concise and actionable. Which again makes sense once you see the A-tiers. Next up we've got Data Dash, which is a very similar channel to Benjamin Cohen in a way that he's a good source of crypto information with the charts and whatnot. Level-headed recommendations, you know. He'll be real with you saying, yeah, look, Bitcoin's probably going to go down more from here. He's not going to be like, no, no, it's going to turn around. Trust me, just one more day, it will turn around, blah, blah, blah. And he also does technical charts with the macro economy too. So yeah, Ben Cohen and Data Dash are pretty similar channels. So next up, we've got Economics Explained. These are like pseudo documentaries on different economic topics. They're nice entertainment videos and they're quite educational for the most part, but since he isn't right in the action of the market every day slash weekly he can't rank higher in my opinion now some of his stuff lately hasn't been as good as it was in the past if he keeps this up he may drop down to c tier in my opinion but we shall see but you know they're good entertainment videos and they do cover broad economic topics or at the very least they used to next up is how money works this is a similar sort of style to economics explained 
this channel will post a lot of various rewatchable content, same as Economics Explained. There was a couple of videos that How Money Works made recently, and it was about how middle managers are kind of useless or something, and the rise of bullshit jobs, which, you know, they're videos you can watch a year from now. Most of this finance stuff you can't watch for a year from now, if that makes sense. But regardless, you know, those two videos, not really investing stuff, but there are other investing stuff that he has covered before. So he gets the same rank for the same reason as Economics Explained. This guy does get a bit of extra points since this guy actually worked in the industry. But I will say some of his videos don't really teach you much. But no one can be 100% on the useful videos. But there are some useful information that he has in some of his videos that I can make stock trades off. So that's why he's B tier. Next up, we've got a channel called Benjamin. And this is one of the funniest on the list which isn't relevant to the ranking because I'm ranking them on investing stuff, not comedy. But I thought I'd just mention it. Now, this channel's got really good information on options and shit like that. Now, he doesn't upload much. So, uh, he can't rank lower due to the good info on options trading. So, although he may make sort of memes and jokes about the options trading, what it does is it prompts me to go and Google what he just said and learn about that because sometimes he'll say something I never heard of. So that's a good source of information in its own. But he also can't rank higher since he's not uploading stock info daily or weekly, like some of the A tiers. And then, yeah, obviously just the lack of trading information as a whole. This channel reminds me a lot of Bro Science Life. For those gym rats out there, you'll know which channel I'm talking about. Now, it's similar in a way where he will make jokes about certain knowledge in the stock market or the sort of gym space. But turns out there's actually good information behind his jokes. Like, for example, the recent Bro Science Life, it was like how to get your girl a booty. And the three exercises he was talking about that you should do and all the jokes he was making, turns out there was actually really good solid information behind it. So even a beginner watching would have actually learned from the video despite the fact that it's primarily comedy. So that's the kind of same vibe I get from the Benjamin Finance channel. Next up, we've got Sohil PKO, however you say it. This channel has really good charts information. So for those technical traders out there, this is a hidden gem. Now, this channel can't rank any lower due to the quality of information, but it also can't rank higher due to the lack of macroeconomic information or the infrequency of the uploads. But good channel for technical info. Go check it out. Next up, invest with Henry. So this guy actually worked in the industry, so, you know, he gets points. Good options information as well. You know, he'll say something you never heard of it before. I'll go Google it. Okay, cool. I've learned something. And he can't rank lower for the same reason as above. Next up, we've got Sorel Amore Finance. This channel does unique videos on more obscure finance topics from time to time. For example, they had one the other day on BRICS, which is sort of some sort of alliance of like developing countries and I never heard anyone cover that topic before and it's useful for understanding the sort of macroeconomic picture so good source of information I hadn't seen anywhere else the information she puts out is frequent enough she provides good perspective on the current issues now the reason the rank is an A is because well she promoted FTX and Masterworks and she did post some sort of status apology on the youtube channel regarding ftx but she blocked comments so you know dodging accountability a bit there and then she responded to one of the comments in the next video talking about it and then she basically said oh we've already addressed that blah 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 um uh, I, I understand kind of but i'm sure you've had some of your viewers lose money because they trusted your recommendation it's not financial advice, but it's a recommendation. So, again, I don't want to talk about it too much because I'm pretty sure I've belabored the point and it's not like I lost any money from it. So, yeah, me personally, why do I care? But I do care from the fact that I've seen a lot of fellow finance people get wrecked from this. Now, next up, we've got Ben Felix. Now, he doesn't upload frequently. He's got unique videos on topics I hadn't seen covered much before. But not enough info that I can trade off that will allow me to rank him any higher than B. Now, I think in one video he said something along the lines of monetary policy isn't the main driver of inflation. 
Now, I'm not sure if I heard incorrectly or not, but that's an automatic bump down if that's exactly what he said. I don't have time to go back through and comb through each video to find out what exactly he said though. But that's an outright false claim. It's very dangerous to be saying stuff like that if you have such a large audience. So for those who don't know, monetary policy is the main driver of inflation, but that's not what we're talking about in this video today. Next up, we've got money and macro. Good macroeconomic information, but there's not very frequent uploads. Uh, this guy actually worked in the industry, and I can't rank him lower than C due to you know him actually working in the industry and his overall focus on the macro economy. But I can't rank him higher than B due to the infrequency of uploads and the fact that each video only delves into one particular sector. Like you've got a video that covers one topic of the day rather than some of the A tier or S tiers where they cover you know, a broad range of subjects that sort of encapsulate everything you need to know at that point in time. Next up, we've got Wealthion. Now, this channel is very similar to some of the A tiers you're about to see, but in my opinion, this channel has had less credible guests on. They have interviewed Steve Hankey before, which is really good. If you haven't seen him before, go Google Steve Hankey interview and watch all of them. You will learn so fucking much. Such a good source of information. He needs his own YouTube channel and he'd be S tier. Now, the videos on Wealthion are super long. Now, this is good for going into the intricate details of the economy, but I don't have time for this. And the time to info ratio isn't that great in my opinion. I can listen to two hours straight of good trading information, no problem. But I don't think listening to a two hour talk on a projected, you know, projected real estate prices or speculation on the current market rally is worth your time. Especially when there's so many other channels that upload good information, as you're about to see in A tier. Next up, TLDR Business, covers random financial news in depth, provides a unique perspective that I don't see from other channels. Pretty good information, but I can't rank higher due to the lack of trading ideas. All right, now we're moving up, A tier. So we've got Stocked Up. Now this is the highest A tier ranking. Everything else I've ranked is not necessarily in order, but this one is, this is the top of the A tier, A plus tier. Fuck it, it's A plus tier. Daily info on the stock market, it recaps news, you know, news relating to the stock market. It's not going to recap the fucking Kardashians lost their sock or whatever, who cares. This channel also goes into the charts if that's what you're interested in. It talks about large option trades from whale accounts. Now why this is good is because this can also give you good trading information because people with millions of dollars normally won't make a huge trade unless they know what they're doing. Unless it's, you know, BlackRock and the FTX thing, but, you know, hopefully that's the last time I mentioned that in the video. But, you know, that's a really good trading, really good source of trading information right there. This channel also has no sponsors other than their own thing. So if you watch their video, they have this little sort of trading bot that they sort of made themselves. But that's the only sort of plug or sponsor that they will talk about. But from what I've seen, it's actually, you know, pretty good. The reason I don't subscribe to it is because I'm building my own investor stat and my own knowledge. You know, I'm not, obviously I'm here to make money in the investor stat, but I prefer to do it based on my own knowledge because that's really going to help me grow later in life. And they also have like a nice little community sort of thing going on. Like they'll reply to every comment. They got a discord as well, I think. Not that that matters for my ranking. Like I couldn't really care less what your community's like, but I thought I'd mention it for those of you who are watching and are trying to get a feel of what channels you should watch. But yeah, I'm unsure how they don't have more subs. It might be their thumbnails, but I, you know, that, go sub to them. They're great. Next up is Stansberry Research. This channel interviews people who actually work in the industry, like they actually still currently work in the industry, like big hedge fund managers and stuff like that. Danielle, she is on this channel and she's a very good interviewer. There's another guy called Matt McCall and I'm not a fan of his videos personally. Some people like him, but I will pretty much only watch the interviews that Danielle puts out. Now, not everyone they interview with I agree with, but that's life, isn't it? Uh, they have some odd sponsorship at the start of the videos though. I'm unsure exactly what it is, but you know, meh. 
if you watch their videos at the start of each one, you can skip it. You can skip it with the timestamp too, which is you know fine. But it's they're trying to sell some book. I think I I don't actually understand. Like I'm trying, I'm running the ad through my head right now, and I still cannot figure out. Like I clicked on the link and everything to find out what it was about, and I still don't exactly know what it is they're trying to sell. But you know, it's not like it was FTX or anything. There I go. I mentioned again. Next up, Kitco News. Now this is very similar to Stansberry Research. Uh, the guy David, he sort of does the interviewing, and he interviews Steve Hankey a lot, which is an automatic A. I also haven't seen any sponsors from this channel. So yeah, they also interview people who actually work in the industry and David is a good interviewer, much the same Danielle is. So definitely go check them out. They're, yeah, those two channels are very similar. Next up, Heresy Financial. Very good macroeconomic topics that aren't covered by many, if any. So he will cover stuff from, you know, moves from foreign central banks, intricate workings of how the Federal Reserve works, stuff like that. The sponsors he takes are okay, I don't really have an opinion on them. He's n he's never promoted anything terrible like FTX. There's one sponsor he promotes here and there called Vaulted. I find it a little bit odd, but when you've seen what he's seen, you probably want to get out of fiat currency anyway, so I understand. Maybe a year or two from now, I'll be eating these words and I'll be like, nope, Vaulted is a fantastic sponsor, but as it stands, I don't really get it. The way it works, I think, is you like buy actual physical gold from them somehow. I don't really know, but you'll have to just watch these videos and watch the sponsor to get what I'm getting at. Next up, we've got Nobody Special Finance, which is a very similar channel to Heresy Financial. There's no sponsors, so far at least from what I've seen. A really good perspective on current macroeconomic data. There's no timestamps in his videos, but his vids are short enough and the stuff he talks about all kind of flows together anyway. Unlike, you know, some of the F, F tiers, you can tell their video is split up into certain points, but they won't put timestamps. But you know, the no timestamps thing is forgivable for nobody special finance. Next up, we've got Patrick Boyle, actually worked in the industry, so obviously gets points for that delves into certain macroeconomic topics and explains their inner workings. Sometimes the content is a little bit dry and long, but it's finance. What do you expect? Uh, Patrick also doesn't have time stance, which is, which is a little annoying, but yeah, what are you going to do? I feel that most people who are into finance YouTube already knows who he is anyway. So if you, you know, obviously if you watch him, you don't need to hear me justify more reasons why he's an A tier. And if you are new, then you'll have to just go watch him and find out why he's a tier. Next up is The Plain Bagel. Another big sort of financial YouTuber that people think highly of, the same way as Patrick Boyle. He actually works in the industry alongside doing YouTube, as far as I'm aware. So obviously points for that. Good perspective on topics, like on particular topics. Like he had a really good video on stock splits, which is what I was talking about at the start of the video with the whole Erica Kohlberg thing, talking about stock splits being good. But the info I got was actually from the Plain Bagel. So, yeah. And then he's also got some entertaining videos on where he delves into finance information from movies like The Wolf of Wall Street, The Big Short, stuff like that. Sort of breaks it down if you're not sure what they're talking about. Next up, we've got Two Cents. These videos are shorter, more basic level stuff on face value, which you would think, hey, that should be D tier in your eyes, but they have really good information on topics I haven't seen delved into before. You'll have to check out their channel to see what I mean by that, but the topics they cover, I haven't seen covered from, you know, the other finance YouTubers, and it provides some good sort of base level information. And they don't upload super frequently, and again, their videos are short, so at most you're wasting five minutes every couple of weeks. Which you're not wasting because their videos are good, but even if their videos were rubbish, it's not like you're losing, you know, 30, 40 minutes a week from watching them. You're losing like five minutes every couple of weeks. The production quality of these videos are also great. Not that that has an impact on my rankings. My top two channels actually have pretty poor production quality all things considered, but, you know, I'm not ranking them on that, am I? But I think they get funded by a third party for their videos, so go give them a watch to help 
add their watch time to their channel so it gets promoted in the YouTube algorithm so they have more ad revenue to keep going. It would be a travesty if this channel lost their funding from the third party. Next up, The Traveling Trader. This guy's got good technical information, goes into macroeconomic topics as well. Odd clickbait stuff, but I can't rank him lower due to the quality of information and the quality of trading, well, yeah, trading information you can get from him. Zip Trader, probably one of the worst in terms of clickbaits, if I'm honest, but he's got good macroeconomic information. He's got good technical information too, and he uploads consistently enough to for you to make trades on. Some of his videos also grab algorithmic data from Kimura, which I don't see anyone else doing. So for those of you who don't know, Kimura is, I know, some finance thingo, and they have certain stats that show when algorithms are set to make moves. For example, it'll show that when the price of the S&P 500 hits 3800, it's set to sell off, which means if you see the price of the S&P 500 going closer and closer to 3800, it's a good idea to put a lot of short positions on because once it hits that level, the algorithms are going to sell off stocks, which means a the value of the stocks are going to fall. So I'm not exactly sure how they get this information, but it's a fantastic source of information for you to trade off. Now, I can't really trade off it because I'm in Australia. So basically the New York Stock Exchange is open during our bedtime, like quite almost literally my exact sleep pattern and the sleep pattern for most nine to five workers in this country. So that's a bit annoying, but for those of you who can day trade or swing trade, definitely watch his videos and keep a good eye out for this Kumora stuff. I'm not sure where he gets this information. I've seen one other channel have this information before, but they only had it once and I can't remember who it was. But if there's a way you can extract this information somehow, it is a very good source for your investing stat. He also has this little sort of um, zip trader U briefing like I don't understand what it is. He sells something and he talks about how he briefed on a stock before market open or whatever, and then how the stock rallied a lot. So he he clearly knows what he's doing, but I, I don't pay for it because again, I'm in Australia. So if he does a briefing before market open in the morning, that's when I'm about to go to bed. So there's nothing I can do with that information. And I'm not going to sacrifice my sleep to try and make a few hundred bucks from the stock market because, you know, I have a job and a career and gym sessions and stuff like that. So I need my sleep. Next up in ATU, we've got Kamikaze Cash. Now this channel's more so entertainment lately, but he has plenty of good information on options on his channel. And there was this one video in particular about dividend investing on his channel, and it was a really well done video so if you're interested in buying stocks that will give you dividend payments go and check out kamikaze cash and search up you know channel name dividends and go have a look and yeah it was a really good video uh in terms of sponsors i'm not sure he's done one in a while i haven't seen any but i could just be remembering it wrong but i know the last few he definitely didn't have any so obviously he gets points for that because he's not going to try and steer you towards some sort of sponsorship bias. He's going to give you the real information that works. Next up, we've got Walk the World. Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. This guy is mainly an Aussie channel, but he does macroeconomic news too. He does a weekly update every Saturday afternoon in Australian o'clock, which basically goes through the weekly, you know, news of every single market across the world. So he'll go from America to Europe to Asia, to Australia, and he'll basically summarize everything you need to know. So if for some reason you really don't have time to listen to any investing stuff throughout the week, but you want to get a gist of what's going on every Saturday afternoon in Australia, no clock, go and check out his channel. He'll title the video something different every time. Like he'll, he'll call it, I don't know, the market's uh, buying it for now or something like that and it'll basically be well yeah it'll basically be that weekly summary so it's not like he's going to title it weekly summary date here you have to like click on the video and find out you'll it'll be pretty obvious what his weekly updates are when you watch his channel now i think he also does daily updates as well 
So if you want a basic summary of the stock market today, watch Stocked Up, this channel, and the only S tier channel, which you'll see soon enough. I said earlier in the video my S tiers, uh, I meant to say S tier, there's only one. Next channel is In the Interest of the People, so that's Martin North, the same guy you just, I was just talking about, and John Adams, they're Aussies. They're, at the moment, they're exposing ASIC, which is pretty cool. I can't rank them lower due to their integrity, their no sponsors, and their rather unique perspective on certain topics. Uh, if you check out their videos, you'll know what I mean. They don't upload very frequently, and there's not a lot of trading info I can do from this, but if you watch the channel, you will see why it's an A tier. Next up, In The Money. Really good options information. A while ago, he did a video on why put options lose value despite the market going down, and he talked about it's because of the Greeks, like Theta, Decay, stuff like that. I had never seen a video like that before. It was such a good source of information for me. And recently, he also smoked all those scammer financial YouTubers in F tier, so he gets points for that too. But regardless of that, he'd still be in A tier anyway, so it's not like my bias hatred towards the F tiers or anything is bumping him up. He would be A tier regardless, so go check out his channel. He's got some good information on actually investing. Next channel, Bell Direct. This is more an Aussie related channel. It's Aussie short videos that basically give a rundown before the market open and after close on the Australian Stock Exchange. It goes over macroeconomic data from overseas, shows technical chart moves too. The videos are about three to five minutes each morning and after the Australian Stock Exchange closes. So it's pretty quick, rapid fire information. It basically gives you all the main points that you need to know. And if you want more information, you can delve you can, you can delve into it from there, but it literally summarizes any, everything you need to know. They also have a weekly update that's a little longer, that's more like six to seven minutes, that summarizes the week that they upload every Friday afternoon. That's also very helpful. This channel also has no sponsors, so it's just pure information. The only issue is it's very Australian focused. They will talk about stuff in the United States because obviously that's the biggest market and a lot of what happens over there will influence the price of the stock market here but in terms of the individual stocks and news they'll go over like australian banks or you know australian commodity stocks stuff like that so although i don't actually trade australian stocks or anything i will eventually and because i found this channel i know exactly where to go for good information on that stuff and last for the A tiers, we've got Wall Street Millennial. This channel makes very unique videos here and there. There was one I remember when I was in Ireland, I was watching it, and it was on the Nikola company. A really good information on that. It was talking about like how hydrogen simply won't work as an energy source. And the reason that was good because this company Nikola, which is traded on the stock exchange, now that I know that their plan won't work, this makes for an easy short when I see fit because now I know the sort of background information of why their sort of main investment strategy on their hydrogen trucks or whatever simply won't work. So a very good trading opportunity. Thank you, Wall Street Millennial. I have never seen anyone delve into that topic before. They've done random other videos, you know, similar to that sort of style. They will go into some unique topic that you've never seen covered before. Sometimes they do stories on certain companies. They're nice to watch, but you can't really trade off this information since it's more a historical perspective, like the history of this company here. Great, but I don't, I can't trade off this, you know. I don't care that they've collapsed. They collapsed five years ago. I can't short the stock now, you know what I mean? But often the information is just far too good to rank them any lower. All right, the only S tier finance YouTuber out there, and you cannot dispute this, the Maverick of Wall Street. No channel comes close. This channel does daily macroeconomic news, doesn't hold back the truth, regardless of the herd mentality. Hersey Financial does this too, but the Maverick of Wall Street is just on another level. Goes into the heat map of the stocks each day. He goes into commodities, he goes into the ETFs, he goes into the charts of the main stocks and industries, such as the DXY, the SPY, etc. He gives his professional opinion on it. He actually works in the field. 
I'm pretty sure he was resigning soon to do YouTube full time. By the time you're watching this, that may have already happened or maybe not, but he has at least worked in the field. So obviously that's a plus. No sponsors. So, you know, he's not going to try and push you towards crypto or push you towards gold or push you towards art. He's going to give you the raw information and that's what you can trade off. He's also very entertaining as well. There's just no stone left unturned in this channel. When he delves into the commodities section, for example, he will bring up all relevant news for the day on it. What the Saudis are doing, what the US has done, what Russia's doing, etc. Shit like that. You know, everything that's happening around the globe on each particular topic so that you know everything. At the end of the videos, he'll also talk about the upcoming economic calendar. So you know when the important stuff is coming up, just in case you didn't see it elsewhere. You know, oh, on Wednesday, we've got some jobs report, you know, that may influence the market if it goes this way or that way. Oh, we've got, you know, some Federal Reserve person speaking. They're historically pretty hawkish, so they may say something that might spook the market. So maybe it might be worth shorting stuff. So the style of his videos, basically, he'll start off with some sort of general market commentary for the day that'll take a couple of minutes and then he'll go into the in focus section and that's basically covering some macroeconomic news for the day he'll talk about why what was said in the media is rubbish or why what this person said is correct he will put up relevant stats and charts he will talk about what happened in the past relating to it he will say what he thinks is going to happen he will have some pretty hilarious gifs that basically will summarize what he's thinking when someone says something. After the in focus section, he'll basically summarize what happened in the stock market during the day. He'll talk about which sectors moved up, which sectors moved down. He will talk about commodities, like I mentioned before, not just gold and oil, but you know, copper and stuff like that. If there's something relevant happening with them, he'll touch on that. He'll then talk about options, so what the general market is doing and what people are basically gambling on, which can give you good trading information, much the same way I mentioned with Stocked Up before. He'll also talk about unusual activities in the options market, which can basically show you some insider trading, which can obviously be some good information for you to copy as well. I think after that he talks about charts. Maybe he talks about something else, but he, he talks about everything. And then, yeah, in the charts, you talk about support and resistance for things. It's like, oh, this has had a triple bottom, so it's probably headed up. So, you know, maybe trade off that. Oh, this has hit strong resistance here. So maybe it's headed back down or maybe this has hit strong support. So that's probably headed back up. Really good trading information like that as well. And then he'll wrap up with the economic calendar. So I, I cannot speak highly enough of this channel. I'm actually subscribed to his little sort of membership thing like he'll put a members only video every monday in australia which is sunday in the us well worth the money i could not recommend this channel enough often what happens is on the car drive home when i'm listening to mav the maverick of wall street talk i'll note down a time where he says something useful like some well it's all useful but something really useful that i could turn into like a social media post i'll make note of it uh, and then after I finish gym and shower for the day while I'm cooking dinner, I'll then go back through and then listen to that part again and then turn that into a social media post. So yeah, really good source of information. My regular viewers will have heard me promote this guy before, even when it isn't a finance related video, because I just, I just can't help but talking about it sometimes. Okay, so I didn't actually put down a script of how I'm supposed to end this video, so I'm just going to wing it. That was my ranking of all the finance YouTubers. Now, obviously it's not every finance YouTuber. I haven't seen all of them yet. Earlier in the year, I made some video called Investing Sources of Information. And I listed some people, but I didn't rank them. And I also didn't have Maverick of Wall Street in there. So that just goes to show you how, you know, as, the, as you keep surfing the algorithm, sometimes different channels will get recommended. So maybe a year from now, this tier list will have changed a bit. But at the time of recording, these are all like the finance YouTubers that I watch and their rankings. There are a few others that I do watch, but I don't watch them frequently enough to rank them. And obviously, you've pretty much got the gist of who's good and who's not at this stage. If you're new to investing, just stick to the Maverick of Wall Street, Stocked Up, Walk the World and Zip Trader. Just stick with them. 
then move on to Kinko News and Stansbury Research, then Hersey Financial, then Nobody Special Finance, then maybe dabble in like Wall Street Millennial, for example. But yeah, definitely don't watch the F tiers. One thing is when I first saw them, they were the first videos that popped up because again, they milk you for watch time. They have the bullshit clickbaits and shit like that. And also you see their stock portfolios, you see like half a million or a million, you're like, wow, they must be a really good investor. No, they got their money from something else that wasn't investing. Like the amount in your stock portfolio doesn't determine how you are as an investor, it's your percentage return. If someone turns 500 bucks into a thousand bucks, and if someone else like them turns a million bucks into 800,000 bucks with their shitty investing strategy, who's the better investor? The guy with a thousand dollar portfolio but if you saw the portfolio side by side you would think that the thousand dollar investor is way worse than the eight hundred thousand dollar investor so hope you get the point i'm getting at just because they have money doesn't mean they're a good investor they got it from somewhere else like real estate or shitty youtube videos so let me know what you think who are your favorite financial youtubers do you disagree with anything on this list you probably do um, although if you disagree with the F tiers and the S tiers, I'm not going to hear it. And if you do disagree, it's probably because you don't watch them enough. So you just go watch a Maverick of Wall Street video, then go watch a Meet Kevin video. You'll see the stark contrast in the quality and the lack of just shady shit that the Mav puts out. But yeah, like I said, I didn't really have a way to end this video. So I'll wrap it up here. Hopefully, you'll be able to increase your investor stat after watching this. Thank you. That is all. Keep grinding. I'll see you in the next video.